In part one of the series, Laravel in a nutshell, we got a new Laravel application running on our computers and we left off with this default welcome page. In this video, we're gonna see how we can start to customize this application. And the first topic we need to tackle to do that is Laravel's routing system. So knowing that, let's dig into the code. So I'm gonna open up my uh, VS Code, my code editor of choice. I'm gonna open folder. I'm gonna go to that herd directory we talked about in the previous video, open up the demo application we set up. And because we're digging into the routing system, the directory we wanna focus on to begin with is this routes directory. And specifically within here, we wanna look at our web routes. This web routes file, you can think of it as a map of your application. Within this file, we're gonna define all the incoming URLs a visitor might encounter on our site, and we're gonna program what should happen in response. As an example, let's look at the default route they set us up with. This route, like all your routes, is gonna be set up using Laravel's route class. And to begin with, we're using the get method which means that this route is gonna to respond to any HTTP GET requests. And that's gonna be the most common way users are going to interact with your site. They're gonna click links that are gonna to lead to different pages on your site, or they might even type in URLs. Those are all gonna be sent using an HTTP GET request. Now this is in contrast to, for example, a POST request. That's gonna happen when you're doing things like form submissions, which we'll talk about later. Now the first argument that we're passing the get method is the URL pattern we wanna to match to trigger this route. And this route we're looking at is for our homepage. So the route pattern here is simply just forward slash. In other words, when we go to our root domain with no additional information as part of that URL, this is the route that's gonna be triggered. Following that argument, we wanna indicate what should happen when this route is triggered. And in this case, we're defining a function that's gonna be invoked. And what this function is programmed to do is to return a view called welcome. And views are a important concept within Laravel. Uh, views are where we delegate all of our HTML work. Where we're gonna find our views is in this resources subdirectory. And then there's a view subdirectory within there. And you can see we've got a view file called welcome.blade.php. This is what's getting returned when we invoke this built-in view method and we specify we want the welcome view to be returned. Now observe in writing this code when we're returning a view, we're not saying, okay, look for this view within the resources view uh, subdirectory, specifically look for a file that has a .blade.php extension. All of those things are assumed based on conventions within the Laravel application. So we're gonna omit that. We're gonna strip it down to just the name of the view file and Laravel is gonna assume all of these other things in terms of where to find that view file and the extension that it's gonna have. And the point with all this is really just to streamline our code, right? Because the important information we need here is what is the name of the view file? If all of our view files are in the same location and all of our view files have this .blade.php extension, it would be redundant to have to include that information every time we're setting up a route and returning a view. Those things are just gonna be assumed by Laravel. And this is actually a pattern you're gonna see a lot through Laravel and any framework where there's all these built-in assumptions and defaults about where things are, how things are gonna work. And when you're first learning the framework, it could be a little frustrating because it seems like there's all these little details to master, but it's one of those, once you get comfortable with them, it will make you a more efficient programmer within that framework in the long run. So that aside, let's focus in on this welcome view. I'm gonna open it up. It's welcome.blade.php. And what you're gonna see if you scroll through this is a bunch of HTML content, because as I mentioned a moment ago, your view files are where you're gonna build all of the HTML content of your applications. Now the content we're seeing in this welcome file, all of it correlates to what we see in the browser when we just go to the homepage. And just as evidence of that, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and clear it all out and let's just replace it with some really basic content. So I'm just gonna throw an H1 in there. We'll say, hello world. I'm gonna save those changes go back to the browser, refresh it, and there's our new content. All right, let's trace how that's happening again. So we just went to our root URL, in other words, just forward slash nothing. That triggered within our route system, this get route. And from within there, we returned a view called welcome. And if we look at that view, this is the content that's getting returned. And therefore that's what we see in the browser. So following that pattern, let's create another page or route within our application. Uh, and let's imagine we were building like an e-commerce store. So we wanted a page for showing products. The way that we would set this up is going back to our routes file, we would define a new route. Once again, we use the get method, but this time the URL pattern we would wanna match is products. 
And then we will follow that same pattern of we will invoke a function that's going to return a view and we'll create a view called products that's going to have all of our product data. And let's go ahead and create that view. So in our view subdirectory, we're going to create a new file products.blade.php. And you'll note that all of the view files I am ending in a .blade.php extension. Blade is a templating language that Laravel uses. It's going to provide shortcuts within our view files. I'll talk about that in more detail in the upcoming video where I talk about views more specifically. All right, so with that file created, let's just throw a little bit of content in there. We'll throw a link to the home page. And while we're editing our views in our welcome page, let's throw a link to our products page. Let's test this out. So I'm going to refresh my home page. There's my link over to products. We could see our products URL was triggered. Here's the content for that. And of course, we can go back to our home page. So that's the basics for creating very simple static uh, pages and responses within your Laravel application. But let's imagine we wanted things to be a little bit more dynamic. Let's imagine this was a full-fledged e-commerce store. And within our products, we had various different categories that we might want to filter by. For example, let's say we wanted to have a page for products and uh, we could have like tech. Uh, we could also have uh, books and maybe, um, you know, health, things like that. Now, I could create individual routes for each of those categories, but let's say we had 100 different categories. I wouldn't want to have to manually create 100 different routes for each of those categories. Instead, I would want it to be more dynamic where the category itself could act as a keyword that my application would take as instructions for which content to load. To see what I mean by that, let's go back to our code base, back to our web routes, and I'm going to modify this products route. I'm going to add on to the URL pattern something called a route parameter. And the way I'm going to indicate that is in curly brackets. And the name of the route parameter I came up with is simply just category, because that logically makes sense for what we're trying to capture here. And with that route parameter defined, uh, I can assume that any value that is entered as part of the URL after products is actually going to be passed to my action that's responding to this route. And the way we're going to capture that is uh, via an argument to this function. So I'm going to set up an argument. I'm going to call it category. I'm going to name it after the route parameter itself. And I should have access to that data. Uh, to demonstrate this, I am going to invoke a built-in helper method that Laravel has called die dump or DD for short. And I'm just going to have it output the category to the page. Now what's going to happen is it's going to dump the category to the page so we can see it, and then it's going to kill the script. That's where the part of die comes in. So in this instance, when I run this, we're not actually going to see this view yet, but that's okay because all we want to do at this point is just check that we're getting the category for the URL or from the URL. Let's test this out. So going back to the browser, I'm going to go to products and I'm going to start with the category of health. And perfect, there we go. So this is what the die dump looks like. It outputs whatever content you're trying to display, it actually tells you what file and what line number that content's coming from. And you can see we're getting that information from the URL. It correlates to what we see there. We see health up here, the category is dumped as health down here. If I were to change this to tech, we're gonna see tech. If I change it to ABC, doesn't matter what I'm putting there, there's a correlation between this part of the URL and the content we have access to on the page. So seeing that, let's imagine how we could utilize that information. Uh, what we would probably want to do, rather than just dumping the category to the page, um, at this point is we would probably want to, say, query a database for all of the products that match the requested category. And then we could pass those products to our view where we would uh, display those products. Now, we don't have a database yet. We don't want to actually have products yet. But just to simulate this, I went ahead and sketched up just a basic PHP array with a few different categories in it and a few different products for each category, just so we can start to get a feel for this. So let me just copy this array. I'm going to bring it over into my route here. And then I'm going to write some code. Let's define a variable called products. And what this is going to be set to is we're going to reference our products by category array that I just defined above. And we're going to extract from that whatever category we're looking for. In other words, whatever category is coming in as part of our, our route parameter. Uh, just to make sure this works, I'm going to do a die dump again of that products variable just to make sure I'm getting the content I'm expecting. And then once we see that's working, I'll talk about how to pass this data over to the view itself. 
So let me go back to the browser. Um, if I try to run this with ABC, that is actually going to fail because ABC is not actually a category I put in that array. So let's do it with an example we know will work. Let's start with tech. All right, perfect. And you can see it dumped out the results. We've got our three tech products. We could see the same thing for health. And then we could see the same thing for books. All right, so we see that we are dynamically influencing what content we're seeing based on our URL route pattern. Uh, and now let's take this up a notch rather than just dumping it to the page. Let's pass this information to the view. The way we can do that is chaining onto this view method. We're going to use a method called with, and we're going to come up with a variable name for the data we're passing to the view. And logically, because we're passing products, I'm going to call it products. And then the second argument we're going to pass is what that data should be set to. So we're going to set it to be our products variable. All right, so then we can get rid of this die dump. And in our view, we should have access to this product's data. And to show that, I'm just going to quickly write some PHP code to output that data. So to summarize what I've done here, I've got a PHP for each loop that's going to loop through our products data. And then within that loop, it's going to echo or print each product to the page. And I set that all up in a uh, HTML unordered list. So going back to our products page, let's refresh it. And perfect, there are our book products. Uh, we could also change this to our tech products. And you can see that um, content is being dynamically updated based on that route parameter. Uh, now to improve upon this, I think our heading needs to be updated as well because we're not showing all products. We are filtering by certain categories. So let's pass the category name itself over to the view as well so we can output that as part of the heading. So coming back to my web routes, um, I'm going to chain onto this another with method. So I'm also going to pass over the category and we'll have access to that via that category variable, which again, we're getting uh, as part of that dynamic route parameter, it gets passed to our function. So now we're just uh, making sure that that is available in our view as well. And then in the view, I could uh, show in my heading, we'll say products, and then we'll output the category. And with that, that's as far as we're going to go with the routing system. I've shown you the fundamentals. Remember, that's the point of this series. It's Laravel in a nutshell. I want to show you just the basics of each key part of Laravel to get a broad overview of the system. Of course, there's a lot more we can get into with the routing system. And so something you might want to do after watching this video is just skim through the routing documentation on Laravel.com. Not necessarily to master everything you're reading, but just to preload your brain with all of the functionality that the routing system provides so that when you start building your own applications and you find yourself needing to do certain things within the routing system, you have a general awareness of what features are available and you could go back and do a deeper dive as needed. And with that, I'm going to wrap up this video. I hope you'll check out the next part in this series where we're going to take a look at Laravel controllers.